One of the things I miss the most from my youth is print magazines, like physical magazines, specifically video game magazines. We had a ton of them. There was like GamePro, EGM, Nintendo Power. There was a bunch of official magazines for other consoles as well, and then unofficial magazines. They covered news, rumors, gave you tips and tricks, some cheat codes for that game Genie, all that good stuff. You got maps. It, it was really cool to have these print magazines in your hands and, you know, getting this information, sharing it with your friends, talking about what the upcoming games were going to be, seeing new screenshots. And with the rise of the internet, you know, more people having internet access, it just becoming more of a thing that people use as a tool to find, you know, information. Print media has been like on the decline. Sure, there's still a lot of gaming magazines out there. Not as many as there used to be, mind you, but there's still some out there. A lot of them are mostly current gen magazines that talk about the current, you know, gaming systems and, you know, video games that are coming out. There's still a few that do talk about retro games, which I find really neat. Being in the U.S., it is a little harder to find some of these magazines. Like Retro Gamer is uh, published in the U.K. Yeah, you can find them out here in the States, but it's a little rare and they're kind of expensive. But it's still a cool thing to go back and look at these old school games. Myself, growing up, I had a subscription to a lot of different magazines. Nintendo Power was the main one, and I loved it. You know, getting all that new information and, you know, sharing it with friends, talking about, you know, what the latest game looked like, things that we're looking forward to. I always liked the little RPG corner that was in there talking about the latest games that were coming out in Japan and could possibly be ported over to the U.S. from Squaresoft and whatnot. It, it was really neat, and... For me, it's kind of sad to not have as much of that anymore. You know, we do go to the internet for a lot of our information. If you're going to need some kind of, you know, tips to get through a game, you just search it on Game Facts or just look up a YouTube video, right? But it's still fun to go back and look at these magazines, in my opinion. So I have been collecting Nintendo Powers a little bit over the years. Not too many. I have a little bit of a, a collection there. But it, it's, a, it's a magazine that I really do hold near and dear to my heart. Just it, it was my favorite. Definitely very biased. Nintendo, they ran the magazine. Obviously, they were going to be biased, right? But it was still a cool one to take a look at. But going back, uh, you know, buying some of these magazines again over the years, I found a few things of interest. Uh, the Nintendo Fun Club News was one thing that was pretty interesting. came out in 1987. And it only ran for a few issues before Nintendo Power came out. There were seven issues total, and if you were part of the little fun club, you got them for free. Looked like you could buy them as well for $2.50. I've never seen these back in the day. I was only, you know, became aware of them later on in life because I just never seen them. I'm pretty sure they were advertised like in Mike Tyson's Punch Out, uh, but other than that, never really looked at these. They came out 87 and they ran until the following year, until Nintendo Power came out. So if you were a Fun Club News member, you got the first issue of Nintendo Power for free, then after that you subscribe. Now before that, or around that time, I'm not 100% on the timeline with this because it's not really a magazine, uh, it's a book. And I, I found this kind of interesting. It came with uh, certain editions of the NES. It was called the Official Nintendo Player's Guide. And with the official Nintendo Player's Guide, it was a complete review of over 90 games for the NES. So it encompassed all the games that were out at that time. This came out in 87 as well, but I'm not sure if it came out prior to the Fun Club newsletter or after or during, but it's still a neat thing to go back and look at. Now, the following year, 1988, Nintendo Power came out. So Nintendo Power really changed the game for, you know, a lot of people looking at video game stuff, for me included. Loved it. Constantly read through these things. I had a subscription for many years. And like I said, I do still collect some of these to this day. Now, the one neat thing that I want to talk about is access to this stuff. So I know I've brought this up in the past, but these magazines, you know, they're kind of hard to come by. Some of the issues are pretty damn expensive, but you can take a look at these on archive.org, the internet archive. They have been archived in all their glory I think this stuff is really neat. So, for example, taking a look at the official Nintendo Player's Guide, this thing is on the archive. You could take a look at it digitally, if you so choose, and scroll through each page. Everything is rendered beautifully. Uh, you got just like as if you had the real book. 
So, I mean, yeah, I prefer to have these things in physical form, but at the same time, they're just, some of these books are just so hard to come by, or magazines, I mean, some of these books as well. This is pretty much a book, but this one I found interesting. There's a lot of, uh, you know, reviews for games, some tips and tricks, that kind of stuff. It, it was almost like what part of Nintendo Power was at the time, you know, in 88 anyway. Prior, you know, this came out before Nintendo Power. But this was really cool. And then to think, like, wow, 90 games, around 90 games, that was all that was out. And I know in the U.S. we have, what, over 700 games, around 800 games total that were released for the NES. But when this book came out, there was only 90 games. So it's kind of neat to go back in time and history and look through this stuff, see what the games were, what was hot at the time, and just, you know, reminisce a little bit. Uh, very cool stuff, in my opinion. Now, you can also look at the other books that I've highlighted, like the Nintendo Fun Club News. So I find it interesting. I think the first couple issues, they were not in full color, and they were only a few pages. Like this one, for example, issue or volume one, number one, uh, came out winter 98. Very neat. But you see it's got like that purple uh, coloring. It's mostly black and white with the, that purple highlight. And that was it. That was it for the first uh, Fun Club newsletter there. And then you can move on up to the second issue. Let's take a look at that one. The second issue was fairly similar, you know, had that purple highlight going on, uh, black and white, but it was like double the size. Had a lot of information in here. Uh, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. A little crossword puzzle. I hated crossword puzzles. Top 30 titles from Nintendo. Uh, I don't know how these are ranked, but they're just like, boom. These are the top uh, 30 Nintendo games. Don't worry about it. Buy them. Buy them all. And then that was it. The back of the page there. And then issue three, uh, which came out fall 87, had some color going on. We had a color cover here, Legend of Zelda, 24 pages. So it kept doubling up a little bit. You still have some of those purple highlights, but some of the pages were, uh, were in color. I, I think I may look to try to get all seven of these issues physically, because I, I do find them pretty neat. Look at that, the overworld map for Legend of Zelda. That's pretty cool. That was missing from like a book that was recently printed uh, when like the NES Classic came out. I can't remember what that book's called. I have it. And it was like, yo, reference the uh, the overworld map for Legend of Zelda. And there was no damn map in the book. It was like, I complained. I think it was Prima Games. I don't, I don't remember who, but I complained. I was like, where's my damn map? They're like, oh, we'll give you a digital version of it. You mofos. I wanted it physically and you didn't give it to me. But yeah, I think I may try to look into getting some of these. They can be a little flimsy though, so... I think finding these in like good condition may be a little difficult. And moving on to issue four, we had Mike Tyson's punch out on the cover. Nice. And I know this uh, newsletter is referenced in the game. And I think the game came with like a, like a little insert, like advertising this as well. But so, so much cool stuff in here. Energize your excitement. Mega man. That is awesome. And this one's 33 pages. Tips and tricks, that's what I'm talking about. I need me some tips and tricks. Top five favorite games. Legend of Zelda, Super Mario Bros., Metroid, Kid Icarus, and Pro Wrestling. Okay. I can dig it. Mailbag, a bunch of cool stuff in there. But with this uh, Fun Club newsletter, I do have uh, the seventh issue. But let's take a look at the uh, sixth one real quick. Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. All about those Nintendo franchises on the cover. A lot of neat stuff in there. But you can also access on archive.org the uh, Nintendo Powers as well, which is really cool. Like this first issue, it's kind of getting a little pricey out there, especially in good condition with the, uh, the poster and whatnot. But yeah, I just wanted to share this with you guys. I, I find this stuff awesome to go back and look at these. I do prefer to have the print magazines. But to reminisce and just go through some of this stuff... Occasionally, like, I'll remember something from when I was a kid, like, oh, there was something in one of these issues that talked about this specific game or this specific rumor, and I can't think of it. I kind of remember the timeline, so then I just go back and look through the, the issues, the dates, like, okay, I remember maybe it was around this time, and I'll just look for that year and start going through the issues. As you see, there's, like, pretty much everything on here. Uh, to take a look at. So I think that's really cool. Um, you know, is this something that Nintendo should be providing? I, I don't really care, man. 
it, it, it's neat to look at. I don't think Nintendo will ever do anything with their previous issues of these magazines. I think it would be cool to have like a big compilation, like an official compilation, just putting all the magazines together in like an official form. That would be cool, but I highly doubt Nintendo would ever do anything like that. I think that would be cool, but just not likely to happen, right? So let's uh, let's take a look at another issue. Let's just randomly pick one. Nintendo Power 96, May 96. Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run, 12-page spectacular, N64. Nice. A lot of cool stuff in here. Skip ahead a bit. Super Mario 3. Oh, it's talking about uh, Mario All-Stars. That is awesome. I mean, who can't deny, like, if you like Nintendo back in the day, who can deny that, you know, looking at these issues wasn't pretty cool back in the day? I still think it's awesome. I don't care what anybody says. But there you guys go. I just wanted to kind of reminisce about some, look at that Mario 64. Wow, what is this? We got to zoom up. Oh, no, next page. We just received the latest hottest, hottest shots of Nintendo's first N64 games. Uh, so this was before the Nintendo 64 came out. They're highlighting Mario 64, Pilot Wings. Oh my God, those were magical time. Magical time for me. But yeah, there you go. Really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Just wanted to share, you know, my thoughts about these things. Kind of showcase like, hey, if you want to look at these issues, they're out there. They're on archive.org. Um, but hey, really do appreciate you guys hanging out. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye.